Hello and welcome to my new recording session where I present facade pattern. So basically who am I? My name is Alexander, I am a freelancer out of Germany. Here you have my contact information, my website, my email, Android app and what kind of services I provide. I provide software development, I can help you improve quality of your software through automatic unit tests. I should make uh, assure that I can do the uh, requirements engineering and I help uh, people to get hired in German companies for permanent positions. So if you interested, just give a, a shout out to me and I think I can help you a lot. So now, as I said earlier, we can discuss uh, the facet design pattern. Uh, let me go to my whiteboard. So, what is the facet pattern? Facet pattern provides a unified interface to the set of interfaces for a big subsystem. It defines high level interface that makes the subsystem easy to use. And basically, it looks like this. You have a class client, which access another instance of the class facet. And facet itself, it abstracts a lot of different classes with their relationships. I have only this diagram to show you. And let before I actually do that, I need to draw the subsystem which you will see in the classes and because of that you have home theater, home theater screen, you have your popcorn machine, you have um, DVD player, then you have your CD player. Then what have you, another stuff which you will see, uh, light, lights, and a lot of different stuff which provide a super experience f during watching of movies. And let me go through the test. So you see here a facet pattern test, pretty simplified ones. Um, here all of the classes which I will use for the facet pattern. My amplifier, my tuner, tuner, I don't know, it may, maybe sound tuner, I don't know, I'm not sure. Because I took out some from the book um, head first. Actually I should mention it. So I'm using the uh, reference to this book from which I get the code. Uh, and this is my test code for the code which I got from the book. And basically I creating this multimedia setup. And here I execute my home theater facade. And it basically goes like this. I can execute the test. The code itself is already on GitHub. You can look it up. And you clearly see what's happening. So get ready to watch a movie. And let me display you a code for the theater um, facet. This is a code for the theater facet. So basically, make sure that you have all of the needed objects for your constructor. Then you provide name of the movie, and then just the show begins. It activates all of the different kind of instances and such and such. Pretty simple stuff. And you then see following messages when after each of the method is uh, executed. Uh, popcorn on, popcorn machine is popping, light dimming to 10%, beautiful screen going down, cool projector on, cool projector in white screen mode, and yeah. So, and then all is uh, back as it was before. And what about facet? Let's switch to the to the view of the diagram. 
what to mention about facet people some people when they start to learn design patterns they cannot separate adapter pattern and facet pattern so the facet pattern not only simplifies the interface it decouples it from the client from a subsystem facet and adapters may wrap multiple classes but a facet has the intent uh, to simplify while adapter has a function to convert the interface to something different so behind a facet you have always a big subsystem of classes and it's a major difference between facet pattern and adapter pattern so once again i repeat the facet pattern provides a unified interface to a set of interfaces in a subsystem facet defines a high level interface that makes the subsystem easier to use and and this is actually interesting some projects which i have saw in the past actually uh, done the facet pattern the only one thing with the facet pattern it is hard to test because if you add another um, if you add to your um, subsystem another relationship then you need to make sure that you update your facet that the facet can actually access this additional module but uh, practice shows that facet can be pretty complex and i would say make sure uh, that your inheritance clean that your interfaces has clean contract and you do not spend too much time to understand the relationship between your classes and your subsystem which facet uh, impl not implement which facet covers so here you go another design pattern uh, for my taste i think it is uh, useful but for very very special cases maybe in legacy projects when you want to when you know that your subsystem would not change if it ever happens but if you 100 percent show that your subsystem is rock steady nobody adding to the subsystem new stuff then you can actually improve the architecture of your project by creating such facet and then all of the clients can access through the facet the functionality of the subsystem but you just do such decoupling that nobody do things like that this is not allowed not allowed to access directly to your subsystem so it goes the client calls the facet of methods and the methods in the facet accessing the subsystem and this is how it should be done once again the difference between facet and adapter that adapter uh, does not uh, alter the interface interface but it adds responsibility facet makes a interface simpler and once again i understand if i say how i understand the facet facet it is like if you have uh, if you saw garden let's just let's just imagine it's a kind of closed area and then you have here i don't know vegetables and people cannot go through cannot go to the garden they need to pass uh, the f this kind of protection so basically it goes like this facet does not allow uh, does not allow anyone to access your 
subsystem of classes directly you always go through this class and this class decide if you allowed to go to the subsystem through the facet or you just give a response of response response you're not allowed to access because you're not authorized so I as I repeated the main disadvantage if your subsystem is pretty big uh, try uh, to refactor your subsystem first and only then when you feel that your subsystem is clean enough you can put it under the facet and then you need to refactor all client calls to the facet and then you have kind of uh, flexibility that if something uh, changes you you can always uh, change your facet but you do not change the subsystem because then you have even bigger bigger problems and that's it basically for me um, I hope you will look it up my code and the code which I have copied from the book and get a kind of understanding how it works uh, as always I should mention each design patterns has advantage and disadvantage facet main disadvantage in my point of view if your facet uh, covers a big subsystem and this subsystem is under constant change then it 100% probability that your fa uh, subsystem will outgrow your facet and quickly uh, other developers start uh, just ignore your facet and they say yeah why should I use facet if I can access your subsystem directly so make sure that everyone in your team, department, such and such, they are aware that if we decided to use a facet in the software architecture, we should maintain the facet first. And then whenever we need to refactor our subsystem, people who are responsible for the subsystem and the facet, they know what to, ch what, what to change. But I say my way will be first to understand if the subsystem is capable of refactoring. If it is kind of hard to refactor, maybe I create a unit as a facet first. And then facet would have the hooks which will go to the subsystem of classes. And then slowly but steady I would improve my facet that, that this facet will cover all of the functionality of the subsystem so basically maybe one last idea which I have got from this book uh, that I just take but uh, one one thing which I should mention uh, okay so like I don't know I realize that I don't need this module why because same functionality done here in the facet and then facet consists this old functionality but the system subsystem itself did improve because less coupling means more performance actually and less uh, complexity and slowly but steady I would imagine that then it will be possible to cut, 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 and then I would have clean, would have clean architecture, like I don't know, things like that, and all of the additional modules which were uh, needed, they would have here, in the facet itself, and then, at some point of time, people can declare final on the subsystem or even deprecated it but my facet will get uh, will be a major milestone for the improving of the software quality so think about that 
if you're not sure what I mean by this design pattern, you can always look it up in the book Head First Design Pattern. I, I found it pretty uh, easy to read, to understand better than the Gang of Four book, because Gang of Four book was created in mind for the C++ developers. And uh, for me, C++ kind of heavy lifting, and I decided, I'm, I mean, I'm Java developer, sure, it's easy uh, to grasp the ideas when I'm using this book. It's not an advertisement, just saying my opinion. And basically that's it. If you have any questions, just uh, write me. You, you, have so, you saw my um, contact information. And that's it. Thank you.